Hello, welcome to Curiosity, the science show, uh, presenting you with the cutting edge of science, technology, medicine and humanities, uh, brought to you by Young Academy of India. This is episode number 21, that is June uh, episode of 2021. So uh, as usual, we cover across the disciplines, including psychology and behavior, humanities, politics, policies and arts, physics and technology, biodiversity, environment and evolution, medicine, health, diagnostics and nutrition. So first we will uh, see some of the papers that has published uh, uh, for the last four weeks uh, that has actually moved the sciences, you know, so we will see one by one. So first is psychology and behavior related news. Uh, one study has found very interesting uh, result on coffee. So caffeine may improve the ability to stay awake and attend to the task, but it doesn't do much to prevent the sort of procedural errors that can cause things like medical mistakes and car accidents, you see. So if you think that having a cup of uh, Java uh, will prevent you from uh, having this uh, traffic accidents, you're wrong. Or uh, if you're a surgeon, uh, you know, you would like to spend uh, hours, uh, probably 20 hours in one stretch, who knows, in complicated surgeries, right? So if you think that having a cup of coffee will uh, give you a boost, uh, it might help you to stay awake, but no, it will not prevent the procedural error. So it has got ramifications for surgeons in operation theaters, as well as for all of us, you know, motorists on the road right so whatever i mean if if it's a question of uh, uh, you know life and death then definitely you cannot trust coffee that is what this research says uh, yeah so also if you're a pilot you know uh, air traffic uh, accidents uh, air crashes uh, most of these air crashes can be attributed to procedural errors because of sleep deprivation you see so sleep is the magic bullet friends for uh, you know the productivity so uh, having a, a sound good night's sleep uh, especially the sleep quality it's not that how long you sleep but the quality of sleep matters immensely so sleep deprivation is terrible for performing tasks involving critical thinking you know so there is a connection with sleep and critical thinking especially uh, uh, to detect the cognitive biases, logical fallacies and mental heuristics. Exciting study, isn't it? Brain fog can linger with long haul COVID-19. So long haul is basically the people who got infected and uh, the symptoms persist for three months or more. So in those kind of patients, oh, even after successful recovery, they are having this kind of brain fog, means everything looks cloudy to them, they cannot uh, concentrate on any task, they cannot focus on it, you know, they, they feel that the brain is kind of cloudy, like as if you didn't have a good sleep, you know, so that kind of feeling can persist for months, that is very alarming, isn't it? So at the six month mark, COVID long haulers reported worse neurocognitive symptoms than at the outset of their illness. So this including trouble forming words, difficulty focusing and absent-mindedness. So not good news, you know. So teens, tech and mental health. That's a very interesting story I read. So earlier, before reading this story, I was also in an impression that this new age technology like uh, mobile phones and uh, video games will actually have an impact on the cognitive abilities of the kids, right? But no, this is a, a large scale study. Uh, that included 430,000 kids, you know, and what they found is that there remains little association. So there is no statistically significant association between this technology use and mental health problems. So most of this uh, news is uh, media blown up stories. They want clickbait, you see that. Um, uh, but anyway, restraint is always good, right? Rather than, uh, you know, making them a, a tech addict. Uh, if at all there is a term exist. So ample evidence shows that people tend to trust vaccines if they also trust the science in general. So uh, trust in the science is some determinant for trust in the vaccine. You know, so those countries where uh, people don't have good trust on science uh, usually have a lot of vaccine hesitancy. One good example would be the US where, uh, you know, almost uh, many of the Q surveys have revealed and Gallup surveys too, that, uh, you know, around 60% of people uh, only believe that what Darwin said in his natural selection theory is right. 
and the other 40 uh, you know they, they take the biblical uh, the creation myth in literal sense you know so there are also a lot of wax and hesitancy right so very interesting that is also a very large scale study coming next is humanities politics policies and arts related stories yeah, we we'll, we we'll cover everything. I'm curious. It's, though it is a science program, science inspired humanities, we we do cover. Immigrants act more like job creators than job takers. That's very exciting, you know. So again, it's a misconception that immigrants, for example, if you are in Germany, uh, people from Syria, for example, is of course they are immigrants, right? So people uh, who are actually extreme nationalists have a feeling that those who are coming from other countries, the immigrant workers, uh, they are the one responsible for our job loss, you know? So they, they eat up the entire employment scenario in that host country, but that is not right, you know? So researchers found that the immigrants not only expand the labor supply as workers, but also expand labor demand as founders of the firms. They start up many interesting companies and they recruit other immigrants and localites, you see, and do so much higher rates than their native born counterparts. It's very interesting. Uh, native born versus immigrants. So immigrants create more job, like uh, a, a Keralaite going to Middle East, like Dubai. Of course, Malayalis have got lots of, uh, you know, uh, startups there, lots of business. For example, jewelries or restaurants or even malls, shopping mall like Lulu Mall, you know. So they do create opportunities for others, including natives and immigrants. So that's an important story, you know, uh, that actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, that argues uh, against alienating immigrants, you know. So for decades, ExxonMobil has deployed big tobacco-like propaganda to downplay the gravity of the climate crisis, climate crisis, shift blame onto the consumers and protect its own interest, according to the Harvard University study published uh, last Thursday. So this ExxonMobil is basically, a, 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 you know, it's a, a gasoline industry, you know, petrochemical firm in the US. So because they are big industrialists, they, they actually propagates the myth that the climate change is not real. You know, that's tremendous. And the same kind of uh, propaganda were, uh, you know, being spread by tobacco firms too. Uh, they support the studies that says that uh, smoking is not dangerous, you know. So we have to be really careful about all this. Uh, things you know that the big industries how do they actually uh, the unethical practices adopted by these big firms so houses in flood zones in the u.s are currently overvalued by a total of 43.8 billion dollars based on the information in the publicly available flood hazard maps raising the concerns about the stability of real estate markets as climate risk become more severe that's a very interesting study friends the reason here is that 43 billion is, you know, you see it's overvalued. It's actually doesn't worth it. Uh, people are simply, they're making people buyers fools because of the, the, the climate change and flood hazard. You know, the, the floods, the flash floods are increasing and properties located on the flood zones, flood plains. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, there is no point in buying that kind of property, isn't it? So this is all ramification of climate change and of course people are not aware of the climate change. People believe that climate change is very slow and in our lifetime or our uh, children's lifetime nothing is going to happen but you are on, on a wrong side you know, of the story. It's very real and uh, uh, probably a matter of decades low-lying area like Mumbai can be submerged. So what's the point of investing in a, a high-rise a flat you know crores of rupees if it everything is going you know so it's really tough friends be aware of the climate change climate change is real large pharmaceutical companies test drugs in dozens of foreign countries but often don't bother to make the drugs available to those nations once the drugs are approved in the US when the US FDA approves it you know they, they tend to sell it on a large markup to these countries so that the social and ethical commitment these big corporations forget, uh, especially in those countries in the sub uh, uh, Saharan Africa, you know, the really poor countries. They do a lot of drug testing in those poor countries, 
but they don't actually uh, the companies the big corporations they don't actually uh, do anything back to them you see that's really uh, you know exploiting this humanity isn't it very bad teen girls and young women in colorado graduated high school at higher rates after the state expanded access to affordable contraception very interesting because teenage pregnancy is on rise everywhere uh, in libertarian countries you know and uh, yes so because of that you see uh, the access to contraception becomes a very important factor uh, if the contraception is offered free of charge and if there is no stigma associated you know then uh, of course uh, uh, the the girls will not the teen teenage girls will not become pregnant they can complete their education you see that is exactly what this study revealed very interesting studies uh, studying science is in what makes students less religious earlier this is one of the main uh, factor contributing on actions against si teaching science in school you know uh, religious stalwarts are against science because they think that if you teach the students science they will understand the folly of religion and they will not attend the religious sermons but that is not right so what this study says is that college majors that focus on inquiry rather than applying that knowledge are more likely to secularize students so inquiry based learning is the key uh, that enables students to fight the religion inquiry means question you know so don't take anything for granted always question uh, whatever that uh, claims the other party is putting forward too so you know that is really important this uh, you know this inquiry based learning so uh, rather than simply applying the knowledge that someone is uh, uh, telling you uh, you know so don't don't believe it right so always question it so i think uh, it's a very interesting study and that is exactly what this actually sh shown it you know so according to this new study that breaks with the traditional claim that exposure of science leads people away from the religion so that is not the case lyrics is from music very interesting lyrics of the popular songs have become increasingly simple over time finds a new study analyzing decades right from uh, 1958 till 2016 of the popular music in the US uh, you know and sampler simpler songs entering the charts were more successful reaching higher chart positions especially in years when uh, you know more novel songs were produced very interesting you know and I think the pattern is more or less same elsewhere as well I know that what is happening in Kerala uh, yes though the, the film songs in Kerala uh, in, in uh, 70s and 80s were a lot more profound even 90s had very interesting meaning for example while our and nowadays it's kind of like empty words you know it's just that the words uh, I mean the musicians make the music first and then the you know this uh, lyricist compose some words uh, you know some random words with no meaning at all just to uh, you know just to actually go inside that uh, boundaries dictated by the music it's something like you know instead of buying a shoe for your leg you're going to plastic surgeon with this particular shoe i want to wear this shoe can you please change my leg with plastic surgery you know so yeah i mean this is what is happening in the reality you know uh, maybe it's something to do with the shorter attention spans too people don't really have any time to really uh, enjoy a poetry or enjoy a very good abstract lyrics who knows Death penalty cases which are assigned to the U.S. courts of appeals are substantially more likely to result in executions when the convicts are randomly assigned to the panels with majority of Republican appointed judges. Very interesting. So Republicans have a tendency, Republicans or con you know conservatives have a tendency uh, to execute the criminals while uh, liberals are more lenient on this way. So again, on criminal justice, the politics play a major role, uh, eye opener, I would say. New study of 14,000 teens finds that the students who are relatively older than their peers in the primary school wind up being more popular in the high school. Uh, in the Netherlands, the effect was about 2.6 percentage. Uh, this study is another example showing that the school cutoff dates have real impact you know so it's yet another proof that 
uh, if your ward your your children if you are planning to send the children to the school uh, which age should we begin the school i mean the, the preschool is fine uh, maybe at f- uh, three years onwards preschool is fine but the real school uh, should we you know send it at the age five which is common here in india and while some parents deliberately uh, send their kids uh, at the age six you know so this study favors uh, you know uh, uh, this uh, i mean six years you know uh, later is better because the kids will be already become mature in their class and because of the academic grading is uh, based on competitiveness you know based on uh, percentile for example rather than uh, percentages so basically edging out the, the other classmates uh, can actually lead you to better job in campus recruitment you know or for higher studies so i think it's a very very important study coming next is physics and technology related stories by playing two tiny drums physicists have provided the most direct drum demonstration that quantum entanglement a bizarre effect normally associated with subatomic particles works for larger objects very interesting that quantum entanglement is something which i really uh, i have no clue what ex- exactly it is but as per my understanding uh, it works in subatomic particles so if you actually spin one uh, you know uh, 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 some particle uh, in one spin and its partner is also having the similar spin you know or if it is uh, clockwise the the partner atom is actually spinning uh, counterclockwise and now if you separate this into uh, a very large distance for example uh, you know one corner of the universe and the other corner of the universe and if something you do something to that one atom the other atom will also be changed you know if you change the frequency of one photon the other photon will also be changed uh, very exciting how how does it work how does these atoms communicate all these are very bizarre in the quantum entanglement but by the way the quantum physics is usually applied only to the extremely minute particles when it goes to a size of uh, for example a cat a schrodinger's cat quantum physics doesn't work at that line but this experiment actually you know it is actually done at a much macro scale it's it's like a membrane tiny still very very tiny drums and yeah that actually proved that it can work the quantum entanglement can work at a, a high larger scale as well it's very significant finding cornell university in ithaca in the new york the us uh, researchers see atoms at record resolution so they actually visualize the atoms you know this is their picture very exciting isn't it the, the dot that you see is basically a nucleus and of course there's kind of a shell around where the you know uh, the electrons spin around uh, no idea so electrons and all you can never see it's it's not uh, you know is it wave or is it a particle we have no idea right but yes electrons exist but these are basically atoms so as you can see some are molecule by a diatomic molecule while well, these are separate atoms so very exciting isn't it this kind of uh, visualization Coming next is biodiversity environment and evolution related stories. Researchers examine guts of freshwater fish preserved in the museum collections. And they found that the fish have been swallowing microplastics since 1950s that the concentration of microplastics in their gut has increased over time. Alarming, isn't it? And museum curators, well, you can also do this kind of primary research. Very exciting, isn't it? The longitudinal studies. dog swarming eye contact is important in dog human communication the eye contact again it's the same thing for the human uh, communication to right looking on someone's eye and speaking that has tremendous impact on your communication style you know rather than looking at your mobile phone that's really bad you know very bad to quit looking on your mobile phone if someone ask you something you know Uh, please don't do that so looking directly on the face the the eyes you know that is exactly what the dog also like yeah so mutual gaze plays a role in dog human bonding and is associated with increased oxytocin you know the feel good hormone uh, oxytocin levels in the dogs and human partner both oxytocin levels increase when you look directly on the eyes the new study found that the shorter headed dogs mongrels 
younger and more playful dogs form eye contact faster you know worker ants physically carry young queens to the foreign nests so the queens can mate with unrelated male that's also very exciting i never knew that they can do that so earlier we know that this mating in the ants happen only uh, at times when they can actually fly you know uh, flying uh, life stage where the queen actually take a flight and the, the flight is known as nuptial flight marriage flight very interesting right and uh, uh, you know during the course of their flight they mate uh, with multiple partners and the, the sperm that she that the queen carries lifelong you see very interesting you know and they can actually uh, reproduce multiple times with the same sperm you know and the male funny thing is that the males after mating after sex male die so the sole reason for the male's uh, birth the purpose of the male's birth is birth is to have sex that's it it dies you know yeah i mean that is what the nuptial flight is so some of these queens cannot fly efficiently and here the the you know the worker ants that basically they are nothing but their brothers so brothers take their sisters very interesting i love this picture this is actually an article for new york times so here you can see the worker ant taking his sister piggybacking to uh, opposite ants uh, colony you know it is basically a, a nuptial arrangement you know she is getting married and he is taking southern france very exciting isn't it i really like this kind of curiosity driven stories uh, studies found that the covid-19 lockdown has led 99000 fever uh, you know air pollution related death globally so it's it's a positive news but when you read this news carefully i was reading that news carefully uh, it's just a drop in a big ocean friends so you know how much people are dying by this uh, you know the air pollution related death worldwide per year 8.8 .8 million death per year 8.8 .8 million air pollution very important you know so we really have to control air, air pollution right so uh, you know it's only 95000 is nothing if you compare with the extent of death caused by air pollution still it's being saved so we really need to save a lot more life by controlling the air pollution right a groundbreaking new study suggests that ancestors of both humans and neanderthals were cooking lots of starchy food at least 600000 years ago and they had already adopted to eating more starchy plants long before the invention of agriculture 10000 years ago so many anthropologists uh, still in a uh, this kind of uh, you know this kind of uh, fancy narrative that uh, this particular uh, uh, agriculture was invented in this fertile crescent uh, uh, today's uh, Iraq Iran and Israel those area you know and then prior to that we were hunter-gatherer we were not actually doing any cultivation but that's wrong this is 600,000 friends 600,000 means even before uh, the human beings came in existence, the oldest fossil of Homo sapiens is 315,000, 3.15 lakh years ago. That is in Morocco, you know. So that that also is a uh, ground. Uh, it's a paradigm shift discovery published in Nature, uh, Nature Report. I think it's published in Science a few years back. So this is really old and even that time people were eating this starchy grains is a great discovery I would say. Wild donkeys and horses engineer water horse that help other species in deserts. I was not knowing this concept. Oh friend, we, we don't know anything, friend. isn't it friends? While reading all this story, I'm, I'm hearing all these uh, new new things that there, there exists of wild donkeys in Middle East deserts and they can actually sense you know the presence of water underneath the desert by smelling you know and they, they dig this small small well that helps the other species so basically these wild donkeys and horses uh, you know they became a keystone species in those desert ecosystem you know so equids wells can act as desert oasis providing major source of water during dry times that benefits whole host of desert animals and keystone trees you know it's very very important isn't it so they have what is called uh, you know vomeronasal organ 
uh, in, inside their nose, you know, Bomeru nasal organ. It's also known as Jacobson's organ. That is comprised of two pockets further up in their nasal passage. You know, and these pockets do help circulate the air and bind to the moisture to smell better. Very exciting and I think we can even make use of these animals, uh, you know, uh, as an indicator to know that where to dig for the well, right? Because they can detect it very efficiently where, where lies the water in desert. Coming next is medicine, health, and diagnostics and nutrition related stories. Researchers have discovered cells in the bone marrow of COVID-19 survivors that were still producing antibodies against virus months after recovery, suggesting this immunity may last far longer than once thought, even a lifetime, who knows? You know, these are basically bone marrow means these are humoral immunity, not cell mediator. These are humoral. Humoral means antibody mediated, right? So, yeah, this is, I think it's a very exciting piece of story for uh, COVID survivors. You know, they might be protected lifelong, but again, kind of confusing. So is the protection is only against this, that specific strain or is it also against all kind of strains, you know? So please go with the government regulations. Don't trust only this particular paper. Of course, this paper was published in Nature. Very high impact, but still, look at what the regulations say. As of now, even though you get, uh, you know, COVID-19 and successfully recovers, you still need vaccine after three months, you know. So COVID-19 virus found on penile tissue could contribute to erectile dysfunction. First study to demonstrate that COVID-19 can be present in penis tissue long after men recover from the virus. I think it's a very ex important uh, study, you know. Uh, the reason is that, you know, this COVID-19 leads to blood clot, right? And if this blood clot happens in penile tissue, that leads to, uh, you know, the sexual dysfunction, erectile dysfunction. That is the reason that Viagra is being prescribed, that Viagra is nothing but this uh, nitrous oxide is vasodilator that dilates the vessels. Uh, to increase the blood supply to the tissues, you know. So blood vessel dysfunction that results from the infection could then contribute to the erectile dysfunction. That's a very alarming piece of story published last month. Erectile dysfunction is six times higher in men with COVID-19. Another alarming piece of story. Six times higher for those who were infected with COVID-19. Also, those who are, you know who have erectile dysfunction are six times more likely to catch COVID-19. See, very very bad piece of story, isn't it? Sixty-seven percent of the participants who received three MDMA-assisted uh, therapy sessions no longer qualified for a PTSD diagnosis. Results published in Nature Medicine. So, by the way, MDMA is basically heart drug. It's also known as ecstasy, you know, so it's a psycho, uh, you know, psychoactive drug. Of course, it's really, really habit forming drug. It's, a, it's a, in the Western countries is a party drug, you know, ecstasy is a common nick for this drug MDMA. So MDMA can be used for PTSD. PTSD is post traumatic stress disorder, you know. So after violent stress or rape or child abuse, you know, people are showing this PTSD, right? Very devastating disease. So for that kind of disease, MDMA assisted therapy is interesting. So psychedelics will change psychotherapy. That is what the future lies for the psychotherapy. We need to use, you know, make good use of these psychedelics, right? So this is the future we have been experiencing 60 years ago, you know, so that's really interesting. A blind man with retinitis pigmentosa can perceive objects after a gene from the algae was added to his eye. That's very interesting. So this is a very exciting piece of study I, I read in a MIT Technological Review. So it's a gene therapy using a gene called Crimson R. So this particular gene is basically used by the algae for phototactics. So phototoxicity means to go towards the light, you know. So algae, as you know, it needs to go towards the light, especially alkyl, uh, you know, the gametes. Because if you swim towards the light from the seawater, it goes to the surface. So encounter with the other, the, the sperm with the ovum or vice versa for mating, chances become a lot higher, you know, in the, in the two-dimensional surface rather than three-dimensional 
sea water is it so that is the the use of this gene for the algae now you take this and then you you actually do a targeted uh, gene therapy and uh, yeah and then of course you need to use a special goggle that can activate this gene exciting really exciting technology and medicine uh, can get benefited with this curiosity driven research friends in Switzerland, among 645 people hospitalized with chronic heart failure, a randomized trial found that who were given regular hospital food as opposed to the personal nutrition plan had almost doubled the risk of mortality within 30 days. So that means that people who took the, uh, you know, the prescribed nutrition, prescribed diet, specific diet, they actually halved their mortality rate. They could able to live longer. It's very surprising for me because nutrition seemingly is very simple kind of studies and this is like a double the mortality means like you, you are actually virtually you are uh, extending the life just by a small nutritional regime. Uh, you know, I would have expected this kind of study happened almost 100 years back but this published only last month, you see. So yeah, don't take it for granted. Even nutrition, I think there are a lot of scopes for, for the studies like this. Yeah. Scientists found that the Mediterranean diet rich in fish, vegetables and olive oil and low in dairy and red meat promotes a healthy aging of the brain. It may also ward off the buildup of the harmful proteins the brain, one of the main causes of the Alzheimer's disease, the most common form of the dementia. Of course, bad proteins do contribute to Alzheimer's disease, isn't it? So in, in, in one sense, it's not that what you eat, but what you avoid, that actually is very important, you know. So this research says that you should avoid red meat and dairy, uh, you know, the milk, cow milk and uh, uh, whatever the dairy products, the cheese or, uh, you know, the ghee or uh, uh, curd. I love curd, but still, you know, we have to take cues from these kind of studies, isn't it? So that's that's really important. Scientists at the University of Zurich, in, again in the Switzerland, uh, they have modified a common respiratory virus called adenovirus to act like a Trojan horse to deliver the genes for the cancer therapeutics directly targeted to the tumor cells. Unlike chemotherapy or radiotherapy, this approach does no harm to the normal healthy cell. So usually in the chemotherapy, it's a, it's com you know the it's it's not really uh, targeted, right? Yeah, the healthy cells also get a, a, a problem. You know, uh, actively growing cells are all targeted. That is why the uh, people under chemotherapy, unfortunately, they lose their uh, you know their hair follicles and ultimately hair, right? So that is not tar but this one is really exciting because this is targeted. And of course, using adenovirus as a vector is nothing new. And I really like this kind of uh, analogy as a Trojan horse. Read out this, uh, what is this uh, Trojan horse and how that, um, uh, you know, war tactic really helped the Athenians. You know, and by the way, adenovirus as a Trojan horse, that is vector, uh, is exactly what the vaccine is doing. You know, the current day vaccine like Covishield, Oxford University's Covishield, Jadox and Cov2, right? COVID shield is basically adenovirus from chimpanzee. That is why the name Chadox. CH stands for ch chimpanzee. AD stands for adenovirus. OX stands for Oxford University. Our COVID shield is, that is, you know, it's also from adenoviral vector vaccine, right? Scientists do create, uh, scientists create an effective personalized anti-cancer vaccine by combining oncolytic virus. That's also very exciting. You know, virus, there are some kinds of virus that light light means destroy onco onco means cancer you know so cancer cells these viruses infect and eats up <laughs> very interesting right and that is very nice kind of virus that we can make use of to target the cancer patients so that in fact specifically destroy cancer cells without touching healthy cells with small synthetic molecule peptide specific to the target cancer to successfully immunize mice against the cancer. It's something like phage therapy, you know, bacteriophages are also like virus that uh, attacks and kills the infectious bacteria. This is very interesting. I really uh, want to see what is going to happen with this oncolytic virus for uh, cancer therapeutics. A first of its kind study has shown that 77% increase in the risk of cardiac arrhythmias 
leading up to the during 2016 US presidential election, demonstrating that successful political events can take toll on the heart health. So, yeah, I mean, you know, the stress contributed by extreme political polarization, affective polarization, we covered this topic a lot of times in Curiosity, you know, completely separated. People see only black and white, you know. So that kind of polarization do have impact on the mental health. And this study is very interesting that, uh, you know, they found this ar arrhythmia is, by the way, is uh, uh, something to do with the rhythm, cardiac rhythm, you know, like tachycardia. Uh, increase or decrease of the rhythm right so by the way they found this risk specifically more prone for democrats maybe because in 2016 democrats lost the election you know and they became stressful maybe but ramifications on endless social media debates and exposure to emotional contents might contribute to the stress level too you know that kind of study that is what this study uh, point fingers to you know, five DNA repair gene mutations may be part of why certain people live extremely long, more than 105 years. So this is a genome-wide association study, which is something like a case control study. They look at the whole genomes of people who live more than 105 years with those normal people, you know. And then they see that which are the genes specifically expressed or specifically is there some mutation or SNP, you know. Then they found that there are five SNPs, that is basically single nucleotide polymorphisms or mutations. So they localized uh, this extreme longevity to five genes. Now we can see that if we express these five genes more on the normal, uh, you know, normal uh, people, can they able to live longer? So it's very interesting, right? Like uh, Yuval Noah Harari on his book, Homo Deus, he was predicting that we can, the human beings can achieve immortality in the near future. Uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, would you like to have immortality? So I don't think that's, that's going to be a, an interesting idea, isn't it? To appreciate life, you need death. Death is what brings life meaning, isn't it? Uh, it's just like darkness is what brings light meaning isn't it so experimental gene therapy cures children born without an immune system autologous xyo gene therapy with self inactivating lentiviral vector restored the immune function in 48 out of 50 children with severe combined immunodeficiency due to adenosine deaminase deficiency there is something called ada s c i d uh, you know uh, with no complications so it's basically something like AIDS but this is an inborn disease ADA is an inborn disease without any functional immune system so you need to give them the immune system otherwise the kids will not uh, live till maturity right so for that they what they did is that they did something called autologous XYO gene therapy so it's basically gene therapy just like the the earlier story which we focused on the eyesight right uh, uh, yes, so exactly like that, the gene therapy, but this is XYO. XYO means organs are taken out of our body and then they did this uh, gene therapy. Basically, this uh, you know, you're infecting with genetically modified uh, substance. So you are introducing uh, a gene into the organ, you know, for example, bone marrow, you know, and then you're reintroducing to the, the patients. So that, that kind of uh, gene therapy is known as XYO gene therapy. And in this case, they did a lentiviral vector, just like in the earlier story we covered adenoviral vector. So these are viruses that carries the foreign chunks of DNA. You know, exciting gene therapy helping these differentially abled uh, uh, people. Highly humanitarian. I love this kind of uh, research. You know, direct impact on society. Why some die while some survive when equally ill from COVID-19? Team of researchers identify protein signature of severe COVID-19 cases. So people with severe COVID-19 versus non-serious COVID-19, they looked at the protein, the whole proteins, express proteins, you know. So it's basically proteomics work, right? So if you compare the whole proteins expressed like you, can, you have to use uh, uh, techniques like multi tof you know, to reveal these patterns. And then they found that IL-6 is the key molecule. IL-6 is, means interleukin-6, which is an ubiquitous pro-inflammatory cytokine, 
you might have heard something called cytokine storm so uh, you know extreme interleukin 6 is something that leads to ex you know over stimulation of the immune system and uh, you know this is what actually leads to the death that is what the new study says meat eaters willfully disregard factory farming as a driver of the infectious disease so basically the factory farming is responsible for uh, you know a large number of infectious diseases zoonotic diseases you know so as you know uh, most of the, the chicken that we get uh, are uh, you know from the uh, the chicken which were reared in factory settings you know extreme inhumane treatment so uh, instead of having free ranging animal you are taking the factory raised uh, you know the thing so factory farming is very dangerous because in case of some infection it can quickly spread without any social distancing isn't it super fast spreading so that is why it is highly dangerous you know the factory farm animal uh, you have to think about it if your if your diet is uh, you know a majority of your diet comes from factory farming and also it has got impact on climate change too you know so scientists warn of enormous health threats posed by intensive animal agriculture from zoonotic disease by the way covid-19 including right it uh, the spillover even happened in wuhan uh, uh, fish market right emergence of the rise of antibiotic resistance and uh, say understanding of these risks are critical you know a person stands on abortion is linked to their often inaccurate belief about when a uterus can feel pain a new study has found so people also always have this kind of feeling uh, the emotional ethical uh, you know identity that uh, anything that can feel pain it's inappropriate to kill you know that is exactly the reason why octopuses killing the octopuses are banned in some countries because octopuses can uh, you know even though it is invertebrate it can sense pain you know so yeah that is the thing so it is inaccurate too you know uh, because the the unborn babies there is still no no evidence exists that they can sense the pain so this may be due to the women being the targets of the anti choice disinformation campaign so anti choice means pro life pro choice right the two uh, you know polarized groups right pro life means uh, they are for the life anti abortion while pro choice is pro abortion right so uh, which systematically overstate at pace at which the embryo embryos and fetuses develop so yeah misinformation is everywhere friends so as conspiracy theories new techniques links lithium distribution in the brain to depression so lithium can decrease the depression very interesting isn't it so it is basically uh, you know it is not it's not directly proportional it's inversely proportional so epidemiological studies have previously found local communities with high natural levels of lithium in their water supply tend to report lower rates of suicide dementia and violent crime you know so if you deliberately add a little bit of lithium that can actually have good impact isn't it so still it's it's uh, way too premature to to uh, you know to recommend such a policy decision but let us wait and watch uh, it's very exciting curiosity driven isn't it daily 30 minutes workout may not benefit everybody it reduces the mortality risk for those who sat for less than 7 hours a day but did not reduce for those who sat for more than 11 hours a day like computer programmers you know they see they sit in front of their pc for a really long period of time this kind of 30 minute workout has no impact on preventing their mortality for them a better approach is 3 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise or 12 minutes of light physical activity per hour spent sitting that reduce the mortality risk by 30% so if you ever spend extended period of time in front of pc uh, you know do like what i do i ha i have a uh, you know this notification basically time in my uh, time piece basically my my wrist watch so every time it, it, it takes the the time uh, each hour i go out i go for a walk i, I take go go to my uh, fridge to have uh, you know a little bit of water and i do a little bit of medicine ball exercise all those things i do every single hour that's the key friends you know don't sit extended time 
uh, in, in a seat, uh, be it reading a book too. You know, every hour you should go out for a little bit of walk. You know, so further evidence supports controversial claim that the SARS-CoV-2 genes can integrate into our chromosomes and stick around long after the infection is over. That is really a controversial claim, but yeah, science has proven that this can happen. But friends, mind it, it can happen only in cell culture. It has never been detected in clinics. So in, 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 the, in the real life situation, we still don't have any proof that it can actually integrate. So basically it's now RNA virus. So integrating into the human genome, which is basically DNA, you need a reverse transcriptase. It's very complicated, so highly unlikely. And people are uh, saying that vaccines can lead to this. No, vaccines can, no, it's impossible. This is about the, the normal infection, you see. So after the infection also, uh, you might get the viral genome integrated. Uh, you know, if this happens in real life, but till now we don't really have any, any proof, you know. So insertion could explain the rare findings that the pre people can recover from COVID-19, but then test positive for SARS-CoV-2 again months later. So maybe that is the reason is this, but we still don't have any proof to substantiate this claim. Intermittent fasting provokes substantial remodeling of the gut microbiome, exciting. So gut microbiome is basically bacteria living in your small intestine. So intermittent fasting is very simple. It means, you know, you can uh, skip breakfast and have lunch and very early dinner. So, you know, so lunch you have any time you like and dinner would be something like before six o'clock and that's it, no breakfast. So you're going to have a long time of fasting, uh, uh, approximately 16 hours of fast and eight hours of uh, the window for food. You know, so that is what. So if you do this kind of a fasting, extended fasting, what is happening is that your gut uh, microbes can regain back to their normal state. You know, so they are not under any stress. So that is very interesting, you know. So intermittent fasting provoke upregulation of butyric acid producing Lactobacillus. that is basically a family of bacteria, uh, provides an obvious possible mechanistic explanation for health effects associated with intermittent fasting. Very interesting study, isn't it? Coming next is observances in the month of June. Uh, by the way, this is my bullet journal and this is the illustration of the June month. I have this kind of a monthly spread. You know, every single month I start the month with a nice spread. You know, this illustration is by me. You can see a dolphin uh, and this one is our pale blue dot. That is planet Earth, blue Earth blue because of ocean yes so oceans day is coming i'm looking forward to it as well as environment day this is also a picture apt for environment day do you know why oxygen in the air from 65 percentage comes directly from ocean you know a pick of planktons of the ocean right so environment day is basically something we should think about our oceans and we should feel gratitude for these tiny picoplanktons. Third is bicycle day. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a uh, you know, I love cycling a lot. And yeah, I'm looking forward to this particular day to third world cycling day. Fifth is world environment day. Seventh is world food safety day. Eighth is world oceans day. Fourteenth is world blood donor day. Yeah, I do donate blood every single year, friends. And I also signed up for whole organ donation with NOTO. Uh, Ministry of uh, Health and Family Welfare of Government of India, you know, not a card. Uh, post death, uh, all my organs can be harvested. And what will I do? What will the other people will do with my body? Yes, the body will go to medical and forensic research. I have already signed up for this. Yes. 21st is International Day for Celebration of Solstice. I'm looking forward to it. It's a Solstice Day, you know, Midsummer's Day. Uh, 21st of June. 29th is International Day for Tropics. You know, tropics is hot spot of biodiversity, right? So yeah, this is about the tropical countries, the day for the tropical countries. And 30th is International Asteroid Day. Yes, so, you know, coming next is Astronomy Observance in the June. Yeah, of course, the, the biggest attraction is 21st, which is June Solstice. You know, the longest day of 2021. 
and also of course midsummer day and astronomists they usually refer this day as the first day of summer so summer starts the spring ends uh, by 20th of june and summer starts on 21st june but usually it is like a midsummer day the summer gets its peak at this uh, a particular day you know so it's it's basically called autumnal equinox uh, no, not equinox i'm saying the the solstice right uh, summer solstice now the opposite is in the winter solstice right i mean the, these four are the most important uh, you know uh, day for the planet earth vernal equinox winter solstice autumnal equinox and summer solstice all because of this uh, 23.5 degree axial tilt right and all these are the astronomical events uh, looking i'm also looking forward to uh, all these events i love sky watching friends by the way all these things you can watch it with the normal binocular i'm not covering anything which needs a telescope to watch of course if you have a telescope you can watch much better quality but if you have a small uh, binocular too you can watch it everything and i suggest you an app called sky view free i love this app you know it, it's far better than the google's de facto app you know the uh, the the sky map sky view is really good i really love that intuitive interface i strongly suggest please check it out first of june is conjunction of moon and jupiter they come really close by second is m13 a messier object m13 a third fifth six or you can see different kinds of uh, this messier object 13 12 10 62 92 on 11th and uh, 6 m6 on 16th m7 on 20th all these days are really good for these objects you know you can check it out and 10th is annular solar eclipse yeah i'm looking forward to see the solar eclipse you know uh, very exciting right and uh, 14th is conjunction of moon and mars and uh, i see uh, 4665 so it's basically the you know it's a star cluster right so you can see on 18th so by the way if you don't know where exactly is this locate locate this ic4665 just put this into this sky view and it will actually show you where to go i mean you know it's it's a fantastic right? it's like a go to uh, equatorial my uh, mountain uh, very expensive telescopes so with the help of this free app you can you know it will virtually show you exactly where is this particular object is located i really love this kind of idea and extremely curiosity driven the, the app makers isn't it they integrate astronomy with the, uh, the gyroscope sensor and accelerometer sensor uh, for this kind of uh, oh my god i really love this kind of science and uh, you know curiosity uh, inspired design concepts you know so ngc 6633 23rd is really good day the strawberry moon it's something like a super moon it's very good quality you know very big size uh the full moon you know the june month uh, full moon is called the strawberry moon you can see that on 25th okay so looking forward to it and 29th is conjunction of moon and jupiter so we have got two moon jupiter conjunction at the very beginning there is a first of june and the very end 29th of june moon jupiter conjunction is there exciting isn't it <coughs> coming to opportunities we have several opportunities please go check out this link okay it is there in the show notes bit.ly forward slash curio show so opportunities include nih several of this nih uh, brain initiative and other neural uh, grants serb uh, you know basically it's a dst wing for the energy uh, grants and uh, short term special call on covid 19 of the serb nih indo russian joint uh, call uh, south asian network of development of environmental economics uh, muhammad bin zaid the species conservation award a Draper Richards Kaplan Foundation grant program, several, several grant programs, friends. Please check it out, right? So NIH Understanding HIV Reservoir Dynamics, so several NIH grant calls here and a call for proposal for DST and GP on geospatial technology development, funding call for Vegan Society grants program, you know, 
so invited for uh, you know artist protection for i mean several several please check it out all these links are in the show notes right curio show link and uh, yeah visegrad fund and application for uh, 11th our racing grand making strategy you know sergey scholarship and russell seg foundation phd opportunities to and mass spectrometer calibration engineer position in the university of maryland that scholarship if you want to do short term up to 6 month uh, you know exchange program with uh, germany in a in a good german university you can go uh, check it out and there is a, a university of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, surreal you have got a reader or professor positions where can you can apply all these links you can just have to click on this google uh, sheet link okay so check it out that Uh, then uh, JR of uh, at uh, various university, including IIT Jodhpur, and uh, yeah, so you know Alexander von Humboldt, German Chancellor Fellowship. The call is open now. If you want to apply for the Germany for the PhD, you know uh, YCR Summer Research Program is a Moffat Taiwan. So that is basically external affairs. You are applying to the Ministry of Education, no? Uh, Taiwan Fellowship, and uh, guest faculty in the Punjab University in Chandigarh. Uh, consultant academics jr of uh, project scientist faculty recruitment i i i t sony path all these things friends please do apply for these jobs and other grand opportunities phd friendship by going to this link so this link is in the show notes of this video and i hope you enjoyed this show uh, 21st episode of uh, june episode of the curiosity and i will be working hard to bring more exciting pieces of information the science is progressing every single day friends so i'm looking forward to uh, see what really move the sciences in the month of june you know uh, to present to you with a brand new episode of the yet another episode of curiosity in august till then goodbye